Hello, my name is Victor Costa and I'm going to be doing a usability test presentation on the Canon 5D Mark II. This is my table of contents. These are the things I'm going to be going over, which would be an executive summary, a background and research, background and research questions, participants and methods, participants, um, I'm sorry, next would be images used for testing, findings and key insights, and recommendations. So this is my executive summary. Canon is a brand that I am loyal to. That is the reason why I'm doing this. I'm actually filming this presentation with my Canon 5D Mark II, which I've been using for a couple years now and I absolutely love. Um, in, my, in my presentation, um, I'm going to go over what five particip participants went through. Um, in my um, usability test, the main goal was to get each participant to grab the camera, pick it up, and feel confident enough to take a photo. That did not exactly happen, but that was the goal. My goal was to have every participant take a photo. At the end of it, everyone did end up being able to take a photo, but whether that photo was good or not was what I really wanted. That's what determined the usability of this. So each participant did take a photo, but some of them had issues, and that's, those are things that would make the photo not crisp, not clear, in a, in a situation where you'd want to do that. So here's some background and research questions. The 5D Mark II is a professional grade camera. Its, M, um, its price when it came out was $3,500, which is pretty pricey. So that, so that makes sense that it's going to be marketed to a person who's already spent a lot of time doing this. My goal was to observe and conduct the usability of this camera. Like I said, I want to know, understand how well people would be able to just pick up this camera without any prior knowledge of this camera and be able to take a nice crisp photo photo because this camera is very well. It carries 22 megapixels, which is actually a lot. They were prompted through eight different tasks, tasks that would lead them to the final destination of taking a photo and reviewing the photo in the end. Being able to review a photo is actually very, very important whether or not you should take another one or not. So being able to review something is very, very crucial. So here are my participants. I had um, a range of, uh, of ages from 12 to 55, two females, I'm sorry, two males and three females. The study was conducted at my job. I work at a, at a church in California, in Gardena, California, that's called St. Anthony of Padua. We have a big community, lots of people there, and I figured I'd be able to get participants from that location. I offered each participant to buy them lunch after the study was done. So here's a photo of the Canon 5D Mark II. This is the front side and this is the back side with all of the labeling on the back. Fifth things in the Canon. So here are some detailed findings on the camera that I got after experimenting with these people and understanding how they felt with the camera in their hands. So first, we're going to talk about turning the camera on and off. In order to take a photo, you must turn the camera on first which Canon does actually very well with. As you see, their on-off switch is very, very clear. It's there. You understand that this is on and this is off. So all participants were actually successful in doing so and turning on the camera. Next, I wanted the participants to set the camera to auto. Because these are not skilled photographers, not people who understand what shutter speeds are and ISOs and f-stops are, the best option for these people is to use auto. Canon's 5D um, auto setting is actually very, very good. I actually shoot in that setting pretty often when I'm not ready to sit there and switch things up when I'm in changing environments. So auto is great for a beginner. Next, I'm going to talk about the setting style. The setting style is actually pretty ambiguous in what was the biggest issue with this camera. I understand that this camera is marketed to a professional, someone who's gone through the stages of smaller, less expensive cameras like the T5i, the T3i, the XD, and things like that. But the Canon has such the Canon 5D has such great components to it that it would be great for a beginner to use this. But the settings dial made it very difficult. So only two participants were able to put it into auto mode, and I believe that's because they have general knowledge of 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 things and of the world and technology. One participant actually had a previous SLR experience, which is the same thing as a DSLR, but it's not digital. That's what a DSLR does. It's a digital photo camera. 
Next, putting the external flash on top of my camera. Because this camera is not, um, does not have a flash mounted onto it, you have to put an external flash on it yourself, which looks like this. This is the external flash. On the back of the external flash, there is a locking mechanism that is very small that you have to press down and move over to the side. So, four out of the five were unsuccessful because they were not able to find this locking mechanism. If you do not lock the flash onto there, the flash will fall and they are actually very expensive themselves as they are. This flash alone is about $400. So, in order to take a photo, you obviously have to take the lens cap off. That was actually very simple. It's a very universal task that most people understand. It's very easy just to take it off and um, they actually had a very good fun time with it. Um, like one, one participant said, that was really easy. Another participant said, that was just like any other camera. Very basic and universal task. Looking through the viewfinder, obviously you have to look at what you're going to be taking a photo of. This camera has a viewfinder, which looks like this. All you do is look through there and you'll be able to see what's in front of you. Um, all participants were able to do that. They knew where to look through it. It's a very basic and universal task as well. All other cameras, no matter how expensive or how cheap they are, you have a viewfinder of this form. Next, um, switching it into screen view. So, just like other point and shoots, you would be able to um, put your camera to screen view so you don't have to have it directly onto your eye. Um, it's labeled as B here. This is the button that you would do. But it's very ambiguous. A lot of participants, well actually every single participant was not able to do so. They did not know what that symbol meant and they were not able to put it into screen view, which is sometimes more comfortable to shoot in. You don't want the camera pressed up on your face. So that made it a little difficult for some participants. Taking a photo. Surprisingly, every participant was able to take a photo. Um, just like one of our participants who said, that was not any different. That's just like my camera. So the, this, uh, the shutter release or the photo, the button that you would press to take the photo, which is actually called the shutter release, is located in a very natural place. When you hold the camera, it's in the very front right where your index finger would be. So that made it very easy and very, a very easy guess to make. And they all guessed properly, which is what it looked like. And it was very fluent for every one of them. Here are some detailed findings on reviewing a photo. You have to know if your photo was good or not. And if you don't know if your photo is good or not, you're not going to know what to do with your next move. So on this camera, the reviewing photo button is right here. It is labeled by a play symbol. Not every participant was able to do so. Four out of five did have some trouble finding it, but they eventually found it playing with it. Once they played with the camera a little bit, they noticed that there was a play button and assumed that that would show the previous photos, and they were able to do so. But they could have um, simply made it a little bit less ambiguous. Here are some key insights. So some positives to this camera, which I was actually very, very surprised with, and I really enjoyed it, um, because it made me realize that people can't just pick up a camera and go shoot. So the on and off button was very clear. People found that very easy. Taking the lens cap off was also another very easy task for our participants. Looking through the viewfinder is another easy and universal task because all of the cameras have the same mechanisms of looking through a viewfinder. And the shutter release or the photo button is also a very good thing um, because of its location. And it's a very big button. It's the biggest button on the camera. So that makes it very easy to find. On to the negatives, some places where we probably could improve. So the settings dial is very um, ambiguous. Um, some, of the, some of the settings on there I still have trouble remembering because of their abbreviations and such. And the auto setting is a little green symbol, just like showed before in the, other pre in the previous slides. And they could have um, simply just labeled that auto. Another thing they could have done is the locking mechanism. So the locking mechanism on the external flash is very small. It's very, very tiny. It's hard to find, it's hard to understand which way to push it forward or back. Another negative is switching to screen viewfinder. That button, just like every other, every other issue I feel like we dealt with was ambigu ambiguity. And it was very ambiguous, the button did not say that this was going to switch to screen view or anything like that. As well as reviewing the photo, we had the same kind of issue. 
some recommendations. So for the setting dial, um, basically just label it auto. I don't see a reason why having this uh, green square is any better than just labeling it auto. That was basically the issue with everything on the camera, it was very ambiguous things. I do understand that this camera is marketed to a professional, but that does not mean that you can make it simple and clear and easy to use. So, as the same with external flash, just label the locking mechanism. Make, label it lock with an arrow pushing it towards the side that you want it to go lock towards to, as well as the screen view and the review button. They simply could have put screen view on top of the button and that would just make it easy for our users, as well as with the review photo. They could have simply just labeled it review. But no, they made it a little difficult with the play. Um, the reason why these things matter is because it makes it hard for a beginner to pick up the 5D and go out and feel confident. It makes them discouraged. A lot of times, photographers spend a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money, which I know myself because I've gone through it, going through different stages of cameras. I started off with the very XD, very simple camera, I moved up to the T3i, then the T5i, then the 5D, which I spent a lot of money getting to that point. Um, I wish I could have picked up the 5D from day one and been confident in the way that it works and maneuvering it and understanding it, but I was not able to do that because there were so many ambiguous things that I had to go through the, the easier stages of cameras. Another thing is it allows it for people of all different backgrounds to pick it up. Um, sometimes it makes me frustrated that photography is only for certain people or people who have certain technological advances, but it's really not. Photography is an art. It is for everybody. It should be for everybody. So why this matters? Um, I believe this matters greatly because it allows for people of all different backgrounds to use the camera. It doesn't require you for you to have this great knowledge of, of cameras and have gone through all the steps of buying five, or five different cameras in order to get to the point of shooting with the 5D Mark II or the Mark IV now that has come out recently in this past year or year before this one, I'm not 100% sure. But this would allow for that to happen. People won't have to spend tons and tons of money in order to get to that point, which I have done myself. Um, another reason why is sales would go up. If sales go up, Canon does better and more people will be able to shoot. Photography is a passion of mine, which I believe everyone should have access to, which everyone should have a basic knowledge of, because photography really changes lives and world views. Through photography, lots of things have been done. And if everyone were able to be able to document and understanding how to use this camera, it would make a lot of people more happy, and people would use the camera more. Lastly, I would thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact me at victor.acosta.115 at my.csun.edu. Thank you.